welcome back to my channel. Today we have a different kind of video. I decided I'm gonna unpack the entire Y2K aesthetic and give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to achieve a Y2K bad bitch look. Lot of Y2K videos on YouTube, Y2K hauls, Y2K outfits, all kinds of stuff, but is there a tutorial on how to achieve that shit from point zero? No. Now there is. I have really done the most. I have a Word document here on step by step in order ways to achieve Y2K aesthetic. There's a lot of misconceptions about the era that I'm going to be clearing up in this video. I'm also going to be clearing up how the fuck people create such amazing Y2K outfits without copying other people because that is a big thing, especially with Y2K since it's very trending is people will just carbon copy other people's outfits and not even understand that what they're copying is irrelevant. Like ugh. I'm going to be breaking it all down in this video for you guys. So hopefully this de-stresses you. Without further ado, bitch, we're gonna get started with step number one. And this is probably the biggest step, and I can tell you it's one that no one does. I don't know how you're supposed to achieve a Y2K aesthetic without doing this. This step is understanding the era. If you don't know what was going on in the era, what was popping, there's no way you're gonna even know where to start. I have made a list of things you guys can look into. I'm obviously gonna be inserting a fuck ton of photos so you can understand what kind of went on during the era, what was popular. This is where you get most of your style inspiration. When I talk about taking inspiration from the era, I mean real photos of outfits from the 2000s, not recreated ones that you're taking pieces of that may not even be accurate to the era. When you take it from the real resource, it's easy to take what you like, put your own twist on it, rather than taking from somebody else that has already done that. Movies, TV shows, music, huge things that people grab inspo from for anything. So it's very important to understand what the pop culture was. Some movies that were very popular during the 2000s, Mean Girls, House Bunny. House Bunny is one of my favorite movies of all time. And you can watch that shit and just get outfit inspo left and right. Some people do think Clueless is 2000 vibes. I think that movie was released in like 1995, a total different aesthetic 90s era. We're sticking with just movies that were made after the 2000s, early 2000s, and in those movies, literally every single scene, there's gonna be an outfit that you can take inspo from. Specifically with music, hip hop was huge during the 2000s. I don't only take inspiration from a woman's fashion in the 2000s, I feel like you guys can probably tell I am inspired by a lot, a lot of men's fashion, specifically hip hop, Nelly, Grills, that music video, I will literally just watch all the time and take inspiration from outfits worn in that video. So Nelly actually has some amazing, amazing 2000s outfits that I'm not joking, I think about all the time when I'm thrifting. Specific pieces he's worn and kind of look for similar ones, Destiny's Child, amazing outfits, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, pop culture is where trends emerge from. So understanding the era is the key to being able to actually take what you like from it rather than taking from other people that have already interpreted it on their own. A huge tip is to look on Vogue Runway. Vogue Runway is an app you can get onto your phone. It allows you to see every single season fashion show from any designer. I often look at Chanel 2002, 2003, 2004 shows or Dior or Burberry and that allows you to see the ready to wear and that is some amazing inspo. Not saying you're gonna be able to go thrift a Chanel tweed set, but to see how they put the outfits together, the accessories. As I already mentioned kind of with music, looking up icons of the era is extremely important. You just look them up and there's street style photos galore. I follow a lot of Y2K Instagram accounts. I guess I'll leave some Instagram accounts below because people just repost photos from the 2000s. So definitely I'll put some Instagram accounts in my description box that you can follow for inspo. Along with looking up icons, paying attention to the brands they're wearing is huge. And I do have some exact things to actually show you guys from my wardrobe. So one really, really popular designer. I'm sure we're all fucking familiar with Ed Hardy, baby. So I have this Ed Hardy hat. It's actually my friend's and I'm borrowing it, but this cap does it for me. The army green color, everything about it. Ed Hardy is a very easy 
designer to thrift or find on Depop. I also have a bag actually hanging up right here. This is by the brand Dooney and Burke. So Dooney and Burke, again, very popular early 2000s. I got this from a vintage market in Toronto. Another example of a purse here is this Guess one, and Guess is a very, very easy brand to thrift. This is my favorite bag at the moment, all denim, which definitely a huge trend in the 2000s, as we know. So when I saw this, I just about died. Even the strap has denim on it. I have quite the collection of handbags, and every single one of these I have thrifted. Literally, I've not even bought any of them off Depop. I've found these all at my thrift stores. There's no secret to finding good shit every time you thrift like you just have to go the more you go the higher the chances you have of finding good stuff so yesterday i went to the thrift store and i spent like an hour and a half there and i found one thing this is by the brand chinese laundry and it's an amazing condition this cost me ten dollars and 49 cents so it's not expensive to thrift 2000s purses and the quality of this is so much better than buying like a new take or a new spin on a 2000s purse this is giving me just like, if I had a chihuahua, it would be in here, you know what I mean? By looking at photos of different icons and celebrities in the 2000s, it will really allow you to see what brands were being worn by people. And knowing that is one thing, but as you kind of thrift, you learn what brands are easy to thrift and then what ones you kind of have to look for either vintage or off of Depop. For example, Hysteric Glamour, Miss 60, Playboy, those are all brands that are kind of a little bit more rare and you're not gonna come by as easily at the thrift store. So Depop is a great place to buy specific items that you might be looking for or specific brands. As I mentioned, Guess is a super easy brand to thrift. I go to the thrift store and without a doubt, I find a Guess purse every single time. Coach is another very easy brand to thrift. Juicy Couture, you can sometimes find, if you go early in the morning, I find there's usually Juicy. Baby fat, my friends have thrifted some really cute shit, but Depop definitely has a good selection for that as well. It kind of just comes with experience of thrifting and understanding like what you're able to find and what you're not because I do thrift my entire wardrobe. I buy some things off of Depop. Honestly, I'm not a huge Depop shopper, but I think that will change as I kind of want to grow my wardrobe into specific things rather than just a random free-for-all like when you go to the thrift store it's really just like what the fuck is there it's amazing because it shapes your wardrobe in a way that you wouldn't expect and in a way that's different from everybody else's thrifting is truly like a huge way to experiment with your style because as much as it is personal it's kind of just what's available and how you make that work some other brands carl Kanai, which i'm going to show you guys some examples as i mention these brands carl Kanai, i actually thrifted these shorts about a month ago and like these are an amazing find such a random thrift store a very small like local one another popular brand was true religion which i love true religion and as i mentioned this is more going off of men's style during the 2000s especially rappers so these are crazy thick stitched true religion denim obviously they're low-waisted as we know i love the waisted jeans and that's definitely a very big big part of the 2000s i suggest once you have done some research found photos that really resonate with you make a pinterest board so you can kind of have all of them in one place and really look at them whenever you want inspo like when i tell you it's the same as if you're finding inspiration for outfits now you look to music you look at photos of models you just don't want to be doing exactly what someone else is doing like i know it's really great to follow influencers that have style you like you're allowed to take inspiration from them but copying them doesn't really allow you to express yourself you're just expressing what they're expressing so doing this like research and then kind of reflect that in your own style and put your own twist on it. So just an example of putting your own twist on shit. This is an example of just like a generic 2000 mini skirt. Literally everybody had one of these, but maybe you don't wanna go as far as having an exact denim mini skirt. It's a little bit too much for you. There's so many options at stores that sell things that are inspired by the 2000s because trends just recycle all the time and it may not be intentional. So I got this skirt from Oak and Fort, which at first glance you would never think this is very 2000s, but the way it sits on my waist is super low and actually this drawstring is super popular in 2000s style with a pair of kitten heels. So this is like more of a modern take on a 2000s clothing piece and that's what I mean when you do your research, you understand what was worn and then you can kind of put your own twist on it. So if you don't want to wear a complete denim full outfit with a denim miniskirt, you can find something more modern that still kind of 
represents the 2000s period. That's why it's way better to understand what went on during the era rather than just like copying what somebody else was doing because then you're only seeing their twist, you're not actually seeing what the original photo was. Pinterest board will allow you to interpret what you have found in your own special way and create your unique style that is going to be different from everybody else's even if it is Y2K. Okay, I'm gonna go over some wardrobe staples. This is my favorite part of the video because I could show you guys um, like exact pieces from my wardrobe that I absolutely love and are kind of essential for building your Y2K wardrobe. Okay, honey? Okay. Obviously, accessories like go without saying. Accessories were a huge, huge part of the 2000s. You could literally wear just like a white tank top and low waisted jeans and look like a regular bitch, but then as soon as you start adding the 2000s accessories, it's just like... I would always start off with sunglasses because sunglasses were they were it in the 2000s and if you guys watch my videos especially my lookbooks you would see that I literally abuse these sunglasses I wear them all the time aviator style almost like an ombre gradient um, darker brown to clear these scream 2000s sunglasses are essential headbands were also a great staple in the 2000s I'm sporting one today for no reason other than my hair look like absolute shit headbands you can grab at Dollarama Walmart anywhere. As I mentioned, hats are huge. Trucker hats specifically were very popular, so I have this one. I wish I had my other one to show you guys, but it's in my friend's car. It's denim with rhinestones all over it. Honestly, the more tacky, the more rhinestones, the better. As you build your wardrobe, you do get a lot more selection of colors, so you don't even have to intentionally buy things that would go with one another. You just kind of generate a wardrobe that works. I don't know if that makes sense, but what I'm trying to say is I have this green tank top, had for a minute, got this hat, I'm like, oh my god, what the hell? They literally the exact same color. And that kind of just happens when you start buying shit that you like genuinely and it speaks to you because you don't intentionally buy things that match, but they just do. It happens without trying. It's very effortless. I can literally color coordinate every single outfit I own because I just gravitate towards the same kind of colors and it makes it very easy to form a very fluid outfit. Along with accessories, I mentioned shoulder bags. I showed you guys a couple examples. I'll just show you another. I do actually have an entire video on every shoulder bag that I own, so I'll link that below. I have this Guess one, which was one of my first shoulder bags actually, and I have worn this so much. And then I have another Guess one. This one I have not worn as much because it's a little bit harder to style, but it's this like faux alligator skin and it's textured. Jewelry wise, if you can get anything with Playboy <laughs> or Tiffany & Co, I have this actual Playboy pendant, which I got off of Etsy. I got this like three or four years ago, honestly. And this pendant only costs me like, I think 12 bucks and it's sterling silver. Another thing that was huge is dynamite, I mean diamonds, but if you're not able to afford real diamonds, any sort of dynamite fake diamond necklace. I'm not saying this is fake. This is like my favorite fucking piece ever. Those are the accessories I would kind of start with. No one's saying you need new accessories for every single outfit. I rewear the same jewelry every single day. Moving on to tops, graphic little baby tees were popping. I actually thrifted this Playboy one and it's baby pink, which was definitely a very popular color. Another thing is little tanks, specifically things with brand names on it. This one is from Guess and it has rhinestones all over it. Tube tops were also huge. Again, thrifted this. I feel like I'm gonna just not even keep saying that because I genuinely have thrifted my entire wardrobe. So this little tube top is super Y2K. Just as a little tip, pairing something that is a little bit more Y2K with something that you put your own twist on will still let people know you know what the fuck is good and you're dressing like a Y2K bitch. This skirt with this shirt will give you a complete Y2K vibe, but if you were just to do this skirt with like a plain black shirt, maybe it wouldn't give that vibe off as much. So it's kind of about finding your balance. It goes without saying, I think that Juicy Couture was popular. I was gonna wear this sweater in the video, but I literally started overheating as soon as I turned the camera on. Juicy Couture, girl, you know what it is. You basically need a full Juicy Couture tracksuit because it's part of the lifestyle. Another thing that goes without saying is low-waisted jeans. I'm gonna do an entire video actually on how I personally style low-waisted jeans. Very versatile, and I feel like people only think you can wear them with a crop top. These ones were thrifted. Oh, shoes. I have to go get my shoes one second. Okay, guys. Shoe-wise, as I already mentioned, kitten heels were pretty much everything. So were flip-flops. So I got these perfect flip-flop heel kitten heels from Zara. They're actually real leather. They're so fucking cute. Like, these with the skirt that I just showed with the drop waist. 
would be amazing. These again are more of a modern take on a 2000s flip-flop. You can easily thrift a shoe like this, but if you don't have any around you and you're looking for this kind of exact shoe, um, you can check these ones out on Zara. Also, Depop has amazing, amazing heeled flip-flops. I feel like when you're starting off any new style or you want to really like change your wardrobe up, it's very stressful. And there's so many different aspects and you think, holy fuck, like I'm gonna have to spend $7,000 to even get like five outfits. But thrifting really allows you to build your wardrobe up. I'm not saying that fast. It takes a lot of commitment and a lot of actually going <laughs> to find good stuff. But I've been thrifting pretty consistently as my main clothing source for probably about two years. And I'm slowly just getting rid of fast fashion clothes because the quality is not there. I'll wear it like five times and I'm like, okay, this is literally trash sell or just throw out if it's not even good enough to sell. What I love about thrifting is the clothes are pretty warm so you know the quality is there and they're not going to just stop performing on you. Thrifting is not only so much more sustainable, it's so much cheaper and it allows you to really create a unique style because no one else has any of these pieces that I've shown you. Also just way more authentic if you're recreating a specific era. Most of these are actually from the 2000s. That Juicy Couture sweater, all of my handbags I just showed you, you can't find real authentic things from an era that's already happened in stores right now. So if you are able to thrift or go on Depop, it's kind of essential for recreating an era that has already passed. And there's a lot of things that you don't even realize would level your wardrobe up so much until you see them in the thrift store and you're like, bitch, what the fuck? I need that. Fashion, as I said in my other aesthetic video, should never stress you out. It's something that is so personal and is always evolving and it just happens, you know? You may end up buying some stuff that you think you like and wear them and just realize they're not flattering on you or it doesn't really speak to you and that's fine. That's what it takes. You need to try different things, try different styles to find out what truly sparks you joy and makes you excited to get dressed. So with all that being said, I just want to say do not let this stress you out because it's something that should be very exciting and fun and expressive and true to you and it's really not something that you can rush. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some insight on what goes into creating a new style for yourself, changing up your wardrobe. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys a lot and I will see you in my next video. Bye.